Our monthly budget spreadsheet contains five tabs. A star tab where you can set your currency and enter all your subcategories. A log tab where you can enter all your transactions. A budget tab where you can add your budget or your planned amounts as well as your actual amounts that will update automatically from your log tab. A calendar tab where you can see all your bills and debt payments due in a calendar format. And a bonus tab where you can focus on spending less and saving more. Now let's start with the start tab. To change your currency all you have to do is double click on the dollar sign field, hit the backspace button and type in a currency sign or abbreviation of your own. For example if you live in a European country and want to use euro you just type in a euro sign. Then when you type this in here you'll see that it will update everywhere else in the spreadsheet. Now let's have a better look at adding subcategories. In total, you can add 15 income subcategories and 25 savings, bills, expenses, and debt subcategories. To add a subcategory, all you have to do is double click on a field, remove what's already been pre-entered, and type in a subcategory of your own. For example, for income, you might receive a paycheck. To remove any subcategories you do not want to use, you simply click on the top field, hold shift, click on the bottom field, and hit the backspace button. Now, let's enter some more subcategories so you can have a better idea of what the budget spreadsheet will look like. Now that you've added all your subcategories, you will see that when you go to the log tab, when you select a category, you'll be able to find all your subcategories listed here, as well as you can see that they've updated in your budget tab. Now the last thing that you're going to want to add in the start tab is your due dates for your bills and your debt payments. When you add this information here, it will automatically update to your calendar tab and add them to your calendar for you. So let's say you just add these days. Now when you go to your calendar tab, you can see that they're all listed in your calendar and listed on the section on the left here. But we'll get back to that a little bit later. Let's have a look at our budget tab first. You can see now that all your information has been preloaded here. Now there's only one thing that you have left to do in your budget tab, and that is add your planned amounts. So basically your planned amounts you can add here in the empty white fields and then the actual amounts will be taken from the log tab so you don't have to do any calculations. The planned amounts is basically your budget. So when you add your income you can see that the planned amounts over here or the total updates. So when you add all these amounts you'll be able to see that now there's $4,600 that there's basically left to budget between savings, bills, expenses and debt. So let's see what that looks like. Now that we've added some planned amounts to our savings, bills and expenses, we can see that it has been deducted from our income section and that there's $1,700 left to budget. Now you can see that if, for example, you would uh, budget $750 to pay towards that first credit card, that now there's still $950 left to budget between all these subcategories. Now, of course, you don't have to make it zero, but it allows you to plan where your income will go for that month. We have included a rollover function in this budget, so basically you can either use this as a zero-based budget by leaving it unchecked, and that way you only use the income for this month that you will receive, or you can use it as a rollover budget, and that way any money that was left over from previous months, you can include in your budget as well as your actual section. So we have included a checkbox here that if selected, will turn this budget into a rollover budget. So basically the planned amount is empty. You can type this in manually. So let's say for example, in October, you already plan to put $500 aside for November. You can enter this amount here. This is open and you can type in anything that you think you're gonna have left over from last month. Now the actual will update automatically. For your first budget, so let's say we're starting in November, this will of course not show. So what you can do is you go to your log tab and for October, the month before, Let's say you had $750 left. You just select income as this is a positive amount and then just select any of the subcategories. Might be useful to type in behind here, start balance. So now you can see that it's $750 or that balance has been added here and has been added to what is left to spend on both this section here and on the bottom down here. Now, one thing that might be good to know is that your actuals will only show for the month you have selected. So let's say, for example, it is currently the month of December instead of November. All you have to do is type in December. And if you want, you can actually switch the start day on which you would like to budget from. So let's say you want to start on the 3rd of December because that's when you get paid. You just type in a three here. So you can also switch the year here and basically your actuals that you enter in your log tip will only show for the month that you have selected here. For as well the year, 
the month as well as the start date. Now let's add some transactions so you can have a better idea to see what it will do with the budget. To select a date, all you have to do is double click if you would just like to pick from a calendar or you can just type in a date yourself. Now that we've added some transaction, let's have a look at our budget. Now that we've added these transactions, you can see that they all have been added to the actual sections and that you're left to spend as well as all your graphs on the top have updated. Now it might be good to know that your actuals will total the transactions for you. So let's say for example you've done groceries once and it shows now $50. Now let's say on the 7th of December you went to do groceries again for another $50. When you add this transaction here, now when you go back to your budget it shows a total of $100. So all the calculations are done for you. All you have to do is add your transactions to the log tab. Now let's say for example the month has finished and you want to create a budget for a new month. The easiest thing to do is to keep this as a template and basically create a duplicate of this tab for the next month. So all you have to do is click on this little arrow here and click duplicate. This duplicate is still linked to the original log tab so now all you have to do is basically switch the months. So let's say for example it's the next month and is now January 2023. As you can see, all your actuals are now empty. If you want, you can switch any of the planned amounts you have previously entered. So let's say, for example, you want to spend more money on groceries for this month, or you want to put more money towards your vacation. You can add this amount here. Now you can also see that with the rollover function selected or turned on, that there's $3,200 that is now still left to spend for this month. Now, if we have a look at our last month's budget, you can see that there was still exactly $3,200 that you did not spend. Now, we do recommend keeping the original budget tab as a template, as this contains all the formulas for the actuals and everything to be pre-filled. That way you will always have a template with all the correct formulas, so you'll know you have one tab that works. And that is basically everything you need to know about the budget tab. So let's have a look at our next tab, the calendar tab. As we've entered all our information in the start tab already, including our bills and the due dates, you'll see that they've been pre-filled into the calendar for you. Now to see the right calendar view, all you have to do is switch the month and the year. So for example, it's currently December 2022, so all we have to do is switch the month to December. If you'd like, you can also switch between a Monday or a Sunday start so you can create a calendar that works for your situation. Like we said, all your bills and debts have already pre-entered in this information section here. We have done this so that you can cross off any bills as paid here or debts as paid so you'll make sure that you never miss a bill payment again. Now, it might be good to know that when you switch a month, let's say, for example, if we go back to November, you can see that your month or your calendar updates, but the paid box sections actually do not update. For this reason, we would recommend making a duplicate of this tab so that way not every single month you have to deselect or uncheck all these checkboxes again. So basically, to do this, you just click on the little arrow again and click duplicate. If you have any other bills that you would like to add, so for example, if you pay rent bi-weekly and you've only edited it once here, you can scroll down to the bottom and add any extra bills that you have here. So for example, if you pay rent on the 1st and the 15th, if you've added in this section here, it will now show up twice on your calendar so you can be sure you never miss that bill payment. In this extra bill section, you can also add any annual bills or quarterly bills just to make sure that everything shows up at your calendar. And that is basically it. That is everything you need to know about our monthly budget spreadsheet. If you have any other questions, I'll be sure to leave some contact information in the description box down below. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.